So uh, I'm Shrek uh, Zhang, uh, assistant professor at the Harvard Med School and uh, associate bioengineer at the Brigham Young Hospital. Uh, our lab has been really working uh, on biofabrication perspectives, primarily uh, bioprinting and the organ chip devices to allow uh, fabrication of human tissues and organs for different applications. Yeah, biofabrication basically means uh, the uh, use of cells and uh, possibly associated biomaterials to allow generation of functional tissues uh, and uh, organ type uh, 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 systems to allow uh, emulation of the human counterparts for, uh, for their functions and uh, downstream applications. Yeah, so uh, uh, as mentioned, I mean, biofabrication can be potentially applied to different aspects. Uh, so one thing is uh, 3D uh, uh, fabrication of these human tissues and organs. And uh, uh, if you uh, uh, then uh, apply those uh, towards, for example, uh, uh, let's say different donor patient derived uh, geometries of the tissues or cell types uh, in there, then you can start to really personalize these medicine according to different patient needs. So that's uh, one aspect, but also another aspect to mention this, uh, uh, this organ chip device is basically in vitro models of human tissues and organs, where you can also imagine you can uh, uh, combine them with cells that are coming from different patients, different donors, different uh, uh, people, uh, populations, and then uh, allow them to really uh, 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 promote our capacity to screen drugs in a better way. Uh, so those are perspectives I think might be relevant to precision medicine with biofabrication. Yeah, sure, yeah, definitely. So uh, in our own lab, we have been really interested or heavily focused on uh, vascular bioprinting, for example. So uh, uh, well, vasculature is essentially one of the most important components of the human system because every single tissue essentially has the vasculature in there uh, in most cases. So uh, we have been really focusing on uh, using bioprinting or this on chip devices to emulate uh, human vasculature. And then with that, you can, for example, combine that with a cancer model with uh, like things like that to uh, then uh, apply precision medicine concepts in there for, uh, for these different uh, scenarios. Yeah, so good question. So uh, I'd say it's uh, probably uh, anywhere between five, 10 years to uh, decades. I mean, uh, depending on the complexity of the organs, certain organs are a little uh, less complex. So likely you can uh, uh, have some of those organs already fabricated within the next decade or so. But then uh, for some internal organs that are super complex, then uh, might be needing a little longer time. Sure, yeah, so I think, I think uh, eventually, uh, well, we have been working uh, primarily on the uh, biofabrication or, uh, or uh, uh, fabrication side of things. So uh, eventually, I think, comes back to a biological problem. So uh, eventually, whatever you're trying to fabricate it has to be uh, functionally uh, relevant to the biology itself. So I think that's really uh, where more efforts have to be uh, placed on to allow generation of uh, truly functional and biologically relevant uh, tissues and organs uh, for, uh, for these purposes. Yeah, definitely. So I think that's a very uh, unique and interesting setting because uh, uh, well, there's, uh, there's mutual need uh, for example, as engineers, right, so uh, we develop technologies uh, all the time and then uh, we have to apply them to something at the end. So then that's where, uh, for example, clinicians and uh, all the doctors are coming in uh, where they have problems, right? And oftentimes if they have, uh, well, if they're in hospital without engineers, they have a problem, but they cannot solve them. But now if you have both engineers and the clinicians together in the same uh, environment, then uh, it's actually very beneficial uh, uh, 
both ways. I mean, engineers can actually go to the uh, doctors and then really apply the technologies to the actual final use. Uh, but then on the other side, the doctors or clinicians can come over when they have a question, so we can actually start to really, uh, I mean, uh, work together in different ways to really push the technologies into the uh, actual kind of translation at the end. Yeah, so I think that's a, a, a good question. So, I mean, it's a very nice uh, city here. Uh, and uh, I mean, people are very warm, uh, welcoming. And uh, again, I think uh, uh, being able to uh, have a conference like this or symposium like this, that's uh, really uh, multidisciplinary as we discussed. Uh, that's very helpful because I mean, again, you have uh, people from different disciplines and then they uh, convene and communicate uh, and exchange ideas. Uh, and I think really uh, from there, it's going to be a, a, a prompting uh, different uh, uh, new areas coming uh, through and also uh, maturation of the existing areas. So a lot of new collaboration potentially happening over there as well. And also education of the uh, newer generations for, uh, for uh, them to be coming to this uh, important area uh, in the future. Mm -hmm.